Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. I'm your host, Minister Edward Broom. It's a blessed day, blessed weekend. Without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? <clears throat> Father God in heaven, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for putting me to sleep last night and for giving me rest, Lord God, and for waking me up this morning, God. Thank you, God, that no matter what we do, what we decide, which path we choose, Lord God, it's all underneath your authority, Lord God. And you work all things together for our good. We love you and we've been called by you, God. Thank you, Lord, that you do that, Lord. Thank you, God, that nothing's out of your dominion or, or, or authority or power or providence, Lord God. Thank you, God, that you that you that that your desire is for us to be saved, Lord God. And that you care for us so much, Lord God, that you love us so much, God, that you gave up your son, Christ Jesus, so that we could be saved and have eternal life with you, Lord God. <clears throat> now, God, I pray that your word go forth this morning and that it does not return to you, Lord. I pray you use me as the vessel that you put the word in and as the messenger who delivers that word, God. Above all things, Lord, I ask that your will be done. Not my will, but your will, Father. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen, and amen. All right. <clears throat> Today's scripture is coming from Acts chapter 16, verses 1 through 10. Let me make this big. <clears throat> Just talking, this is Paul talking about this is them. This is Luke writing about Paul. Since then, Paul came to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who believed, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted to have him go on with him, and he took Timothy and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in that region, for they all knew that Timothy's father was Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered to them the decrees to keep, which were determined by the apostles and the elders at Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and increased in number daily. Now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, <clears throat> they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. 
and the vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Now after Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. May the Lord bless the readers, the hearers, and especially the doers of his holy word. <coughs> All right. Um, there's two things going on here that I want to talk about. I almost skipped the first one. It was on my mind, but I almost started talking about God's providence, and I almost skipped the first one. The first thing is Paul obeyed Jewish custom, circumcision, in order to reach more people. It wasn't that, you know, Paul, Paul preached circumcision don't gain you anything, uncircumcision don't gain you anything. It's only faith and love that matters, you know what I'm saying? Faith activated by love, that, that's the only thing that matters. It don't matter about your physical body. But he, he obeyed that Jewish custom that, that, and that to, um, to and, and for the right reason though. Sometimes we must go along with the law of the land if it does not go against the law of God, especially if it leads to more souls being saved and coming to Christ Jesus. See, uh, here's an uh, so, sometimes we must do what what the law of the land say. Now I'm I'm not talking about when it go against the Bible. No, I'm not talking about when it lines up on the other side opposite of the Bible. Nope, don't do it. I don't care who told you to do it. Don't do it. Um, one example, and I use this example. One example is um, I've got some loved ones. Uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, 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 they believe in the the Hebrew Israelite thing, the the the, uh, the black Hebrew Israelite thing. You know what I'm saying? They, the the word of God is still a word of God. It's something that that's what they study the word of God. It's just that some of their teachings, uh, some of the teachings are different, and they may take the word literally, and they may abide more of the old by the Old Testament more, rather than by the New Testament, the New Covenant. And so, uh, and so, in an, in an effort for me to be able to, one of my reasons, in an effort to uh, be able to understand, uh, to have an understanding with them, and to and to and to minister to them, I. Uh, when I was, uh, I said to the Lord that I was going to stop eating pork. And it was for him. Now, I ain't talking about way back then. I'm talking about now in, in my walk with the Lord. I said, God, I'm going to stop eating pork, man, so I can do, because I can so do some more things. But he said, you going to do it? I said, yeah. I said, he said, okay, we'll do it. Then it was it was no longer my option. It was, a, it was a command once he said, do it. But anyway, I stopped eating pork and seafood and all that stuff there because that's something that, that they believe in. You know what I'm saying? Um, they stay they stay away from the things that the Old Testament tells them to stay away from eating. And so it didn't, it don't hurt me to not eat shrimp. I don't care about no shrimp or no lobster, crab or nut. I don't care about that stuff. And pork give you high blood pressure anyway because it's cured with salt. People add salt to them they're cooking it. So it doesn't hurt me to do those things. And furthermore, for me to stop eating those things does not go against the commandments of God. See, now this this is this is what I'm talking about. Sometimes we have to go along with the law of the land, as long as it doesn't go against the law of God. If it's going to win more souls, if it's going to reach preach the gospel to more people, if we're going to be able to get an understanding with somebody and, and be, get get close enough to them to. To, to 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 bring them to Jesus Christ, you know, if we're really serious about our walk with the Lord, because if you're serious about your walk with the Lord, believe me, what you do is going to be for the Lord. You're not going, there's not a, not one, you get seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Not one day will pass by without you saying, what am I going to do for the Lord today? Now, that's true with me. There's not what, what I'm going to, what am I going to do for the Lord today or with the Lord today? See what I'm saying? Because you can be doing something for the Lord, then you might be doing something with the Lord. You, you know what I'm saying? On behalf of the Lord, you can be letting the Lord, the Lord can be working in you all. But 
Not one single day goes by where a true follower of Jesus lives his full day out and does not say, what am I going to do for the Lord today or with the Lord today or, or, or in honor of the Lord today? The Lord got to be every day in your life, man. And so for me to give up those things, it wasn't a big deal. You know what I'm saying? I, that ain't something I enjoy anyway. So that's not, that wasn't even a sac. That wasn't even a sacrifice for me. That's something easy. Like I tell people when we fast and they're like, we're going to do the Daniel fast. I'm like, that's not even a real fast to me because I love salads. I don't have to add buttermilk ranch dressing to it. I can eat vinegar and oil on, on my vegetables for three weeks. That's, you know, and eat fruits. And, I love fruits and vegetables, raw fruits and vegetables. And so that's not really a sacrifice. In the same way, me giving up some of those things to 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 be able to get close to them, my family, my loved ones, it was not a sacrifice at all. And sometimes we must do something with, and that's their law. It's the law of their land. So sometimes we got to go with the law of the land as long as it doesn't go against the law of God. As long as it doesn't go against the law of God. Uh, God uh, will for us is for us to be saved. First Timothy chapter two, verse four. I won't say verse three and four. Those are my go-to verse. But verse four says um, that all, God desires that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. And the knowledge of truth is that Jesus Christ is the only mediator between the Father and mankind. That's what God's will is for us to be saved. And he will make sure that the opportunity to hear the gospel of Jesus is available. See, he'll use me staying away from certain things so that I can go around people who frown on those things. Because uh, if, if if I still ate of certain things or if I still smoke, if I still smoke cigarettes, you know, people look at me and be like, man, I don't want to hear what you're saying, bro. Because you still smoke. You you can't even overcome smoking. You know, that's what they, that was some people say. I know a lot of believers will say, well, don't worry about what the world says. They're going to talk bad about you no matter what you're doing. Yeah, I don't. if they talk bad about me when I'm doing good, that's okay. The Lord says they're going to talk bad about you. But if they're talking if bad about me because I'm doing bad, if they point out my sin, that's not okay. I say this, I'm adamant about this. If somebody can point at you and say, look, man, you are living in sin. Look at what you're doing. You live, you are live, you are practicing sin. You're living in sin. You're not, you don't seem repentant for it. You don't seem like you're trying to overcome it. Guess what? That's a flaw. That's a flaw. Somebody can point at your sin. And, and, and that's a reason for them not to listen to you preach the gospel to them. See, don't you, don't you let your lifestyle and your behavior be a, a hindrance for God delivering the gospel to someone. Don't you stop God from being able to use you. He'll send you on the path and try to use you. And guess what? He already knows if you're going to try or if you're going to quit. He knows that, but you don't know. And he already knows that the people that you go to are going to look at your sins and, and reject everything you're talking about, or they're going to look at uh, a person who does not practice sin uh, uh, consciously, a person who does not uh, uh, who who does not continue living a life that's contrary to the word of God, a person who does not live in a, in an unrepentant state. See that that'll cause some problems. Now we might say God has the upper. God says has had to say so about everything. Yeah, but God doesn't force you. He doesn't force you to change your lifestyle or your behavior. He pushed you can you could have been like me. You could have been bagged in a corner, facing a life sentence in jail, uh lawyers working against you, DA wants you to to sign a deal for 35 years, nobody helping you, no no agencies or organizations helping you, willing to help you on your side. You could have been like me doing all those things and still living in the world, still getting high, still smoking and drinking, cussing, fornicating, adultery, still lying, still stealing, still uh, everything. God didn't force me to live for him. I could, I had the choice to do all the things I was doing before I was in that situation. See, but he allowed that situation. 
and I made the choice to follow him. And he said, well, this guy has a heart out for me or something. I don't know what he said. Maybe this guy is, has repented, and maybe I can use this guy. I don't know what God said. I ain't going to toot my horn. I don't think I even deserve what God gave me then or what he's giving me now, to be honest about it. I still have thoughts. I still have flaws. I still have sins and issues and lusts and desires that I deal with. But my will is to do God's will. And so maybe he sees that. Maybe through all of my flaws and sins and, 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 and failures and imperfections, God sees that I want to do for him. I want to do his will. He might see how far I can succeed. I mean, you know, way further than I can or further than anybody else can. But I think that he knows that I at least want to. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think. And he was he's going to make the opportunity available through me if that's his will. And I think it is God's will to 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 use me so people can hear the gospel. Um, <clears throat> God's providence. Let's talk about God's providence. This is what I wanted to talk about. Uh, I'm almost out of time already, and I'm not going to go far past the time. Not too far, if the Lord will. God's providence prevails over all things. Now, providence, what is that? God's providence means that uh, it's under his authority. It's under his, he's working all things together for our, for, for the, in love, for the salvation and the care of his sheep. His 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 dominion, all it all it, nothing is out of his jurisdiction. His providence is going to prevail over all things. Let me expound. Let me go a little further. God decides if things will go one way or another, regardless of what we decide to do. The thing that's been bothering me, not being able to hear God on the decision, because I thought I had two choices, but it looked like more than two choices to make. And then God spoke to me yesterday. He said, uh, man, go ahead. Do this. It ain't going to kill you. <laughs> I said, what? He said, yeah, it ain't going to kill you. You're going to come out of that right there. What? You, this is the mission. He said, remind me again. God got to keep on reminding me of what the mission is. Sometimes I get like Peter. I'll I, I be walking on water and I look around and forget what I'm supposed to be doing. Peter was supposed to be walking to Jesus. And grabbing Jesus' hand, but he looked around and lost track of what he supposed been doing and started sinking. I started sinking. God has to remind me constantly of what the mission is so that I can stop sinking because I feel, and I, I know you can probably tell I was distracted maybe yesterday and the day before, one, maybe a day or so. And because God, I, I still wait on God, but then he had to say, look, I, you look, man, don't stop being distracted. You know, just keep walking toward the mission. I got you. And so, regardless of what we decide to do, God's providence is going to prevail. He's going to send us in one way or send us in another direction. As we can see in today's passage, God spoke to the ministers, the preachers, Paul and Tim to them. And Luke, because Luke says we, it was a group of them. It wasn't just one person or two people. Uh, God spoke to the ministers. The preachers through his Holy Spirit, guiding them away from certain cities and guiding them towards the cities that he desired. And I want to tell you this right here. This is what God is saying today. God is saying, trust in his providence. I'm telling you, trust God's providence. Trust God's dominion. Trust that his, his kingship, his lordship. Trust in, trust in his authority and, and trust in his power. In all things, God, trust that he has your best interest in mind and he will not allow the enemy to have victory over God's children. God will not allow the enemy to have victory over God's children. In all of our decision making, God will work things together for the good. But I'm going to tell you how, though. Trust that no matter what choices we face, God's providence will not allow us to make the wrong choices if. Here's the condition. I'm going to say it again. Trust that no matter what choices we face, God's providence would not allow us to make the wrong choices if we listen for his voice and obey his spirit. You see, Paul, 
they turned around from that city, they turned around from that city, and they uh, went to that city where the Holy Spirit was leading them. And I'm going to tell you something about Paul. He got a little arrogant. I think Mama Saxon said something about this too, but I, I think I preached about this, not, not this particular verse only, but some people came up to Paul. They said, this is what's going to happen if you go to this town. It says some men, some, some men by the Holy Spirit of God came and told Paul, you're going to be bound if you go to this town. Paul said, I'm willing to die for the gospel. I think he got a little arrogant then because the spirit told him don't go to all these towns. He obeyed. The spirit told him to go to Macedonia and he obeyed that. But at another time, the spirit told him, you're going to be bound here. The, I think the spirit said, don't go that, don't go there or, you, or, or you're going to be bound there. But he decided to go there anyway. And that's exactly what happened to him. If I'm not mistaken, um, that might have been Paul's last ride. I, I, I should look that up before I spoke about that because I don't want to mislead you. But the thing is, let's not hear what God says, do it. Hear what God say, do it. Hear what God say, do it. Hear what God say, and then disobey it. Let's, if we hear God speaking to us, if you hear God's voice, you feel God's Holy Spirit prompting you, obey it at all costs. Obey it every time because you never know who God is. Is trying to save by using you, using your actions, your words, your testimony, your obedience. Your obedience to God's Holy Spirit could be the determining factor in somebody being saved. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for using us. Thank you, God, for <laughs> using someone else to save us, God. God, Whew, let your light shine in us, God, so people will see you inside of us. See what we're doing for you. See what we're doing in honor of you, Lord God. See our deeds, our behavior, our actions, our words, Lord God, our intentions, Lord God. See our uh, physical emotions, Lord God, and glorify you because of it, Lord. Let us be used in all ways possible, Lord God, to save a soul to save more than one soul. On this day, Lord God, use us to save some souls or to at least lead someone in the right direction, Lord God. God, we want to be used by you, Lord. Have your way, God. It's why we were, why we were saved in the first place, God, so that we can help save others. God, as we go forth on this day, Lord, have your way, Father. Speak, your servants are listening, Lord God. Help us to hear clearly what you're saying, Lord God. And help us to see what you're showing us, God, and give us the heart to obey. Give us a heart of obedience, God. Uh, give us spiritual ears so we can hear you, God. Spiritual eyes so we can see what you're showing us, Lord. But God, we want a willing and obedient heart, a willing and obedient spirit, God, to be used by you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. All right, that's it for Morning Cup with Jesus. If the Lord is willing, we're going to be right back here tomorrow morning around the same time. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you.